What's up, guys? I'm Sarnos Hoops, back today with another video. And today, we are back with another episode. Not really a series, but just like a little thing, a trend, I guess, I've been I've been on that I've been enjoying is how good are they really? But today, we are talking about the new look Philadelphia 76ers uh, with the acquisition of Paul George, Tyrese Maxey's, uh, I don't know what that brother put on, like 20, 30 pounds. I don't know what he was doing. Shout out to him, though. And obviously, the MVP, Joel Embiid, or, you know, former MVP Joel B. How good is this team really? And we will be getting right into that, but don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. We're six subs away from 900 people. Six. And I know we can hit 1K. When we hit 1K, I'm probably doing something special for you guys. So again, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. And let's get right into it. So the first thing I really want to talk about here is Paul George, right? What does Paul George obviously provide for this team? One, a catch, another catch and shoot threat now for a guard, right? Right here, nice and easy, stands in the corner, right? Spacing, huge. Especially for a Sixers team where at times, when you have guys like Kyle Lowry, teams didn't really necessarily respect them, right? Plumlee gets the pick and roll, right? Easy three. Like, you want... I think the thing is for the Sixers, and, it, it, and it's kind of how it always will be, I feel like, with a Joel Embiid-led team, you want to ensure that your buckets are quick and easy. And I know, I know, but Emster, that's for everybody. Yes, but I think with Joel's play style specifically and how at times his play style can really grind the game to a halt in the playoff setting, I think they need someone, and they already do to some extent with a Tyrese Maxey, but now with a Paul George to make even quicker, easier buckets or even someone that can help in isolation to create something different, I think that's huge, right? Again, just working out of this, this could be MB, right? And teams are going to have to then fight to figure out where they defend it. Because even in this situation where Plumlee rolls, right? If he was, you know, able to, and, and if George gets that pass off, if he gets that pass off, I mean, that's MB rolling to the rim. That's disgusting. Even here, right? Transition play. PG could get the ball, right? Just defense is getting set now in the current system. Teams are going to have to go, okay, we got to slide back, stop and bead. We got to make sure Maxi gets covered, right? So even here where he gets a tough three, right? Like Paul George is a tough shot maker, and that's always going to be a big part of Paul George's game. I think Philadelphia, this, this Philadelphia situation should, hypothetically, create the easiest scenario he's ever been in, in his career. Just because you now, in a way, is a very almost like 2K um, like my, my era is, you know, my GM, whatever my league, like perfect scenario. You have a, a, an elite big, a really, really, really good guard and a really great wing. You have sort of each of your main positions covered by someone of a high caliber. Um, so now being the third option on the team, cause I do believe Maxi should be the second option, second ball handler, um, I think that should help Paul George. Now, I don't know. I guess that really depends on Nick Nurse and how he schemes it. Um, but even defensively, right? Paul George is going to be bringing something else to this team. Because at times when we when you would watch Philly try and roll the ball out without the Anthony Melton, without some of these guys, the defense on the perimeter could get a little cooked. Now, Maxi, I don't think is that good of a defender. Uh, and Embiid is really good when he's healthy, which we're going to get into sort of later on. But I think PG can bring a consistent level of at least good defense, right? Like this is a great cutoff here, anticipation read by Paul George because he had someone like Aaron Gordon. So he didn't have to necessarily respect it that much, right? Even here off the miss, right? Transition play starts. And PG sliding back to his man, making sure nothing's getting too crazy, right? And Jokic, know, he knows how Jokic likes to play, right? Christian Braun gets the ball, sticks to Michael Porter Jr., right? Rises up out of the key. And right behind James, basically, in a way, like he's hiding behind Harden. Boom, right? And that's beautiful. Like, you can do plays like that, and then you get the transition foul. So I think what Paul George ultimately provides for the team is something we already know. I think it's the three and D, pause. But it's that two-way play that a lot of teams can't necessarily get from a wing at that age. Now, they did pay him a lot. So the concern for him, obviously, is will he be healthy come playoff time? And if playoff time comes and he is healthy, will he actually perform up to standard, which you would have to really hope so. 
Um, now, obviously, you can say that for any team in the league, right? Like, if Jason Tatum doesn't perform, if Jalen Brown doesn't perform, if Giannis doesn't perform, if Jokic doesn't perform, you can say that for any player. But I guess for this team specifically, it's going to be even more important because, again, you have a big three. Esque. Like, I'm not saying, obviously, it's like a, a Heatles or something like that, but you know what you're doing, right, if you're Philly. Yeah, that's what you're going for. Um, and then Maxi. I'm very high in Tyrese Maxey. Um, I think he can be a legit all-star, all-NBA caliber, consistent guard in this league um, if he continues to grow, right? And even here, it's just the the passing has significantly improved, and I think it's going to have to continue to, right? And this is to Kelly Uber, and them keeping him, by the way, huge steal. Like, I think that's a great steal. You can run Paul George at the four, Kelly Oubre at the three, right? You can get Maxi at the one. And at that point, you kind of run whoever you wanted to or slide those two up and try and run something different, right? But great three there by Oubre. And again, Maxi is going to have to continue to improve as a ball handler, improve as not necessarily a ball handler, but as a distributor, as a playmaker, because he's a secondary option on this team, right? Even with Embiid there, right? That's great. But you notice, right? The defense basically sank in because, they, again, they didn't respect Lowry. Tobias floods in this side. You could even argue here. I'm not going to lie. He could have gotten the ball to Uber. It would have been an even easier bucket. But getting the ball out to Embiid, right, this is going to be even tougher for teams to guard. So it, it, it's imperative that Maxi like, really steps it up. And this, I think, is going to be a big thing. Three balls. I think this team, I guess it's my, like, bold prediction, they won't lead the league in threes attempted the Celtics exist they will continue to do that that is their style I believe though this team should see a significant increase in the amount of threes taken not necessarily by Embiid um but I think when you see Maxi and you see Paul George and you got Uber like these are guys that need to continue to be taking threes and I think that's how you do your best to if you want to get into that grit and grind slow down play of Embiid and the three ball is falling teams are gonna be a lot more reluctant to go and just then double Embiid because then you're leaving a wide open shooter who might be hot and at that point three is more than two and you're cooked so I think you're going to see the three ball be the big priority for the Sixers this upcoming season. If Nick Nurse does it the way I would think of doing it, I guess. Um, but even here, right, though, and B, as you can see, kind of brings the game slow, right? And again, Maxi catch and shoot, deadly. Like, he is, and I and I have said this before, I believe, on the channel. I genuinely do believe Tyrese Maxey was the best player in the first round series. Um, like, out of everybody that played. He was, to me, he was better than Embiid. He was better than Brunson. He was the best player game to game in the first round. Um, I mean, even here, right? Like 15 seconds left. Embiid has now a, a legit Jamal Murray-esque kind of player where he's got that support. Like, look at this, right? Like, that's just disgusting, right? Like, you needed a quick three. You're down three. And he's just going to bring things to a different level. Right. And again, him and the AMB two man game is going to only get more deadly because if this is Paul George, Josh Hart can't risk just him sliding. Right. And again, though, I do think the MB play style. Now, I didn't spend a lot of time getting clips here for Embiid just because I think we all know how this is going to go. Right. Great screen here by Brunson. Back out. Right. And again, teams are going to be more reluctant to not like this is not going to happen to Paul George is there. It's just not. Because then you have Ubre that could go over here, right? You already make your shoot, uh, your lineup far more deadly and spread out. Uh, and again, I think it's just a matter of how healthy can this team be. Um, the Knicks are obviously another team that I talked about. Like, if they're healthy, right? To me, I think I will have taken the, the 76ers to be the fourth best team in the East. And I know what you guys are thinking about. Emser, you, you have all these guys that you like on this team. Why would you rank them fourth? For them specifically, I feel like asking to see a healthy season from them. If people are consistent, it should be the same way than they viewed the Los Angeles Clippers basically ever since 2021. Um, will you ever see this team fully healthy? Joel Embiid in the playoffs is never fully healthy in his life, basically. The only time he was was back in like 2018, 19, and he wasn't Joel, like, he wasn't Joel Embiid the MVP winner 
all NBA caliber consistent. Like he just wasn't that caliber of player. And Paul George, if Paul George is healthy, is he actually going to be playing like they need to for him to win? Or he won't be playing at all, which I think is also an issue. Now, hypothetically, this could be the best team in the NBA. If everything stays perfectly healthy, the system works, they know what they're doing. This should be the best team in basketball because you have all three levels of scoring from all three of your best players. Like, There's really nothing that none of them cannot do offensively. The issue is they do get hurt. The system they run with and beat offensively, I think, hinders him and his team because it becomes so slow, so predictable, and so foul-drawing reliant that things get really gross when the going gets tough. Um, now, do I think they could be better than Milwaukee? Do I think they could be better than New York? Absolutely. They could beat Boston because at the end of the day, I think Boston's bigs is still their biggest weakness, and they have Joel Embiid. The issue is, though, is are the other, not so much Max. I think Maxie will step up. I think you're going to see his numbers dip a little bit. So before I get in the comments, you know, however many months from now, but Emster, look at his numbers. They're not that good. Well, now we got Paul George there, right? So now his, they have to go down. If they go up, I mean, at that point, we're having a whole conversation about Tyrese Maxie that people ain't going to like. Um, To me, guys, this team is legit. It's just a matter of, will they stay healthy enough for the fulfillment of that vision to come to light? Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Are the Sixers the fourth best team in the East to you? Or are you sort of putting health to the wayside and just going, I'm sure you put them on paper. I still think they're better than the Bucks. They're better than the Knicks for sure to me. The only team that I, I won't give it is the defending champs, right? That makes sense. Otherwise, not a lot of teams are messing with us. If so, that's fine. But I think we all realistically are taking health into effect to some degree, whether we like to admit it or not. This team should probably be like the second, third seed in the East. But I can already imagine and being misses 10, 15 games. Paul George misses five, six games and it's a tough stretch that they really needed him. And they're at the four or five seed. I think for their best interest, they need to secure the top three seed. They want to make sure that their relative competition is easier in the beginning of the, of the playoffs so that if Embiid is fully healthy or close to it, he can endure going in. Let me know what you guys think down below. Are the Sixers the best team in the East? Second best team? Where do you think they are? As always, this was Amsterdam No Soups. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Have a beautiful rest of your day, guys. Peace out.